Hello everybody, this is the final part of my analysis of this discussion between Sabor and this caller. We concluded part 3 with Sabor making up nonsense about origination and transformation probabilities because he couldn't come up with any rational explanation for the caller's arguments that strongly suggest homology. The video continues but takes a darker tone with Sabor belittling the caller because Sabor is completely lost. Okay, let me let me just repeat this one last time, yeah? I don't care what you think. I'm talking about how evolutionary academics look at this. No, you're not. I've watched many evolutionary biology lectures from prominent experts in this field. None of them talk about what you're talking about. By the way, let me, let me just uh, explain something, yeah? I gave you evidence. No, you didn't. You dismissed his argument because, despite the overwhelming scientific evidence, you insisted on a level of certainty that is only found in logic and mathematics and is not part of science. This is your desperation to argue against homology. You didn't provide any counter evidence of your own. I gave you evidence. No, I, don't. I think you didn't. And I want to ask you about that. I want okay, wait, to ask wait, you about that. One, one, second, one second, John Doe. I don't think only, you gave me only, evidence. Look, I gave you evidence that the origination probability is assumed to be zero in abiogenesis. Who, who are the people you quoted again? I, I, quote, about. I quoted Elliot Sober, Alex Rosenberg, Richard Dawkins, the most famous Darwinist in the world. You Richard can look Dawkins at Dawkins is not an origins of life researcher. Okay, fine. He's not. But you have evolution. evolution. What were the other names? What were the other names? Elliot Sober, Alex Rosenberg. Look them up. Elias, how do you, you spell Sober? You, you, oh my god. If you don't know who Elliot Sober is, why are you even talking to me? That's just a lame attempt to try and gain the upper hand in this discussion. Elliot Sober is a philosopher of biology. Interestingly, he is a critic of intelligent design. Of course, Sobor likes to quote philosophers, not biologists. Why are you trying to argue on something that you're ignorant about? Your argument you... is that I haven't heard of this specific guy. Okay, so let me just explain something, yeah? When it comes to abiogenesis, who's... You demonstrably well quoted someone who is not an Origins of Life researcher. Okay, wait one second, one I second. I want to check if the other guys you quoted are relevant. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on a second, yeah? Elliot Sober is a philosopher of biology, so That's therefore... not an origins of life researcher. Why, wait, would, I, why would I wait, hear about him? Wait, wait. John, you're being extremely ignorant right now. You haven't even let me explain who Elliot Sober is and why he is taken as an authority when it comes to abiogenesis research. Is he? I've just done a Google search on Elliot Sober abiogenesis and absolutely nothing comes up of him providing any insight into abiogenesis research. Some of you may have been aware of the back and forth between James Tor and Professor Dave Explains on abiogenesis. I don't remember either of them mentioning Elliot Sober. This sounds like just another ill-informed quote mine. Let me explain, okay. explain how a philosopher is going. Let me, let me explain to you why he's relevant. Uh, there should be a book over there. Is it muted? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need to find this book. Well, that's that for now. Okay. All right. <laughs> These are just some starter books, but the one of the books I was looking for, I couldn't actually find. I think I've got it at home instead. So conceptual issues in evolutionary biology and this other one about parsimony phylogy phy phylogeny and genomics by victor albert right and there's another one evidence and evolution by uh, elliot sober the, these three books but let's just go with the one that's the freshest in my mind which is evidence in evolution by elliot sober sober goes into this transformation and origination probabilities again i've not read this book but i've linked to two reviews of this book by academics and neither of them mention origination or transformation probabilities. They are linked in the description. The great Detective Inspector Monkfish put a very helpful comment on one of my videos, which I encourage you to pause the video and read. I believe the transition probabilities are low. The reason why is because I believe the Darwinian mechanism is overhyped and it's a conservative force and the evolutionary uh, mechanism of working on uh, random variation leading to these mass ev uh, uh, evolutionary changes i think is a very good the blind work 
the thesis, I think that makes me really think that the transition probabilities are low. So as well as coming from a creationist angle, he also demonstrated a lack of understanding of the evolutionary mechanism which resulted in his arbitrarily chosen transition probability, demonstrating that he really doesn't know this. If, if there's an ape-like creature, and after some years there's another ape-like creature, but has human-like features, and then you have a human, and then you have... In fact, let's just do it incrementally. Every year you have a 1% closer to until it looks like us. The thing is, if the transition probability is zero, and I believe that, then all of these are independent. And by the way, we as we as Muslims, just to let you know, theoretically, we are ambivalent to the idea of all of life and its evolution and, and this type of thing. Our minimum commitment is that Adam is a miracle, just like the miracle of Jesus, just like the miracle of Moses parting the sea. That's our bare minimum commitment that we make. So, Sabor. Could you tell me the origination or transformation probability of Adam being a miracle or of Moses parting the Red Sea? It's clear this caller is a lot more knowledgeable than the average caller and certainly far more knowledgeable than what Sabor was thinking he would receive. This would explain why he wasn't able to make any coherent counterpoint. In fact, looking at the fossil evidence and the genetic data, it's clear that homology is by far the best explanation. Anybody who wishes to challenge it can do so, but through providing evidence of an alternative mechanism and not arguing over philosophical terms. This is a long discussion where we learnt that Sabur will just waffle to seem scientific to hide his religious bias. Thank you for watching and please let me know what you think in the comments section.